Bah, raids are hard and challenging. I can solo this boss. Oh no, it's the sizzle, not the sizzle! Howdy folks, and welcome back to another episode of Tyria Talk. My name is Rich Procopio, aka Bog Otter, and this show is all about Guild Wars 2. This is episode number 86, and today I'm going to give you my impressions of the Spirit Veil raid instance and the first boss that's in there, the Veil Guardian. Last weekend they had a beta weekend event where we were supposed to be able to uh, test the raids, but they were having some problems with the new squad UI, and the raid instances were closed for much of the weekend. They did manage to fix it towards the uh, end of the event, and they extended the beta weekend into Monday, so I had a chance to jump on a live stream and uh, jump into this raid instance with uh, nine folks from my Twitch chat. And it, well, we had a great time. We did it for about three hours or so, so I wanted to kind of just give you guys my impressions of what I saw and what I felt from this uh, one boss fight that I got to try. So that's the footage you're seeing in the background here, and there's a couple things that I want to point out before I kind of get to my opinions about it. First thing is, realize this is a random assembly of people. We didn't care about what their spec was, we didn't care who they were, and we were not on voice chat. Now they could hear me with a like 10 second delay over the Twitch uh, chat, but it wasn't kind of like a coordinated group on voice chat. The other thing is we had access to Ascended gear when you went into the instance. They, they allowed you to kind of swap into whatever gear you wanted to. I was wearing uh, Ascended gear by the end of the attempts here, but I know that not everybody in this 10-man group was, so we might have varying levels of, of gear in there. What makes this scenario a good test is the ArenaNet developers have gone on record to say that they have tuned these encounters to be extremely difficult. They have tuned these encounters to uh, not require Ascended gear necessarily, but that's where how that's how challenging they made it. They made it so assuming that the group would be uh, wearing all Ascended gear. And they also said that, you know, pug groups or pickup groups of random people would probably find it very difficult. They might be able to beat the first boss or two, but it's really not meant for, uh, you know, uncoordinated groups like that. My personal opinion is over time, players will get better. They'll get used to these fights and, and it will be something that, you know, pug groups uh, with a with a firm leader, with a, with a leader who knows what they're doing and can kind of uh, command control, they, they should be able to clear maybe more than just the first two bosses. But I wanted to test in this kind of environment to see uh, whether it held up or not. So the content starts with three trash mobs or mini bosses. Uh, there's a red guardian, a blue guardian, and a green guardian. And you have to fight them, and we were able to get through these without any problem. They, each one of them has some simple mechanics. One of them was only affected by condition damage. One of them you had to strip a buff off of him in order to do damage to them. And the third one had the ability to teleport you to random places. And all of them had little AoE circles and stuff that you had to get out of. But it wasn't something that was difficult. It was just something that, you know, you kind of learn the mechanics that you're going to need to actually beat the Veil vale Guardian boss. And I like you know, I like it when a game introduces you to mechanics in that way. It's a, You kind of learn by doing. And that's always a great way to... Uh, uh, introduce yourself to different mechanics like that. So our group of random people not on voice chat were able to kill these uh, trash mobs. Not too difficult. It didn't take too much time. And then we spent the majority of the uh, the two and a half hours that were left uh, wiping over and over again on the Veil vale Guardian. So we never actually got the Veil vale Guardian down. We were able to push it into phase two around, I guess it's around 66% health or so. And uh, But that is all the progress we were able to make. We actually could not down the boss. Now, the boss is its super fun, all right? It's unlike uh, anything that we've seen in Guild Wars 2 before. It really felt like, all right, these are, these are actual mechanics. We can't just stack up in a big group, you know, nail all of our buffs and go go ham with our dps and take this thing out we actually have to uh, coordinate so one of the big things that you have to get used to right away when fighting this boss is like every 10 seconds or so he's going to put down an aoe red circle on the ground with a little blue orb floating above it i i called these the sizzles because there's a crackling sound that accompanies it so not only do you have a visual warning there's also a a sound an audio warning and it sounds like a sizzle so every time we said sizzle, we have to group up. What you have to do is you have to have at least four people from your raid jump into this AOE circle before it blows up. When it blows up, 
it's going to hurt everybody in the raid, but you can minimize it if you have four people standing in that circle. If you don't have four people standing there, a whole bunch of people are going to go down, and it's usually going to spell a wipe, because this thing happens like every 10 seconds or so, and uh, you know, you just got to constantly be on your toes and be aware of that circle. So I think that uh, any group that's going to be tackling this boss, that's the absolute first thing you got to you know, worry about. You have to be able to, to have that awareness and jump in there. I think with a coordinated group on voice chat, they're going to want to assign specific people to look for that. Probably, uh, preferably range DPS, uh, so that they can still or, or healers, so they can still do uh, their abilities and stuff while they're sitting in that circle, and maybe take some high uh, high DPS uh, melee combatants and let them just focus on the boss. Now, once the uh, once you pushed the boss into phase two at around 66%. The boss splits into the Red Guardian, the Green Guardian, and the Blue Guardian again. You have to actually separate them, take them to different sides of the uh, arena, and, and then their mechanics from before come into play. Like one of them you have to boon strip, one of them is condition damage only, uh, one of them is direct damage only, and, and so you got to have to split up your group and know, which, you know who's going where. So this is the kind of coordination you have to do in advance. You're, a raid leader is going to actually have to assign people. All right, you, know, you guys are great with condition damage, you guys are going to have to go over there you know you guys have the boon strips you're going to go on this way and etc so there's going to be ha they're going to have to have strategy you're going to have to know what your positions are you're going to have to know your assignments and it's just really the type of thing that we've been looking for you know we we've had snippets of this um you know with some of the open world bosses like the you know like the triple jungle worm thing and that's into quaddle you know you kind of have to assign people but you're dealing with like hundreds of people at once sometimes and it's kind of like a general like all right we need a bunch of people to do this and a jump bunch of people to do that it's not that they didn't take coordination but this is going to get very specific you only have 10 people every single person is critical to uh, succeeding in this and like one person making a mistake or one person like not doing their job is going to cost that attempt you're going to wipe and you're going to have to start over there's a pressure situation that occurs with it and it, and it, it gets tense and uh, it, some people might say, well, that sounds stressful, and it is, and if you don't like that kind of thing, then this might not be the, the best content for you, but it's that stress and that urgency and that one mistake could wipe us that actually makes killing it satisfying. If we were able to get this kill the, uh, like just in a couple of attempts, we would just kind of you know shrug our shoulders and go, all right, well, that doesn't speak very well for you know the first raid there. It wasn't exciting. But now, having wiped on it for a few hours over and over again, I know that when my guild gets together to do this, we're going to have to learn it, and it's going to take some practice, and we might not be able to do it in the first night. And if it takes a couple of nights and we finally get that kill, we're going to feel immensely satisfying, and you're going to get an, an adrenaline rush. And it's a, it's a feeling I've talked about before way in the past about... You know, my experience is playing World of Warcraft. I have some really fond memories of raiding in there because, you you know, there were literally weeks would go by working on the same boss with the same group of people and we finally would get it down and it's it's unlike any other feeling, you know, because it's, you know, you're working with a team, you're, you're tweaking your strategies, you're trying to figure out what works for your specific group and that's immensely satisfying to, uh, to get in that. And that feeling isn't something that I've experienced too often in Guild Wars 2, unfortunately. So I'm, I'm super excited for it. It does look like that the Guild Wars 2 raid experience is going to grant that. This is not going to be a walk in the park. And, uh, and what I also like about it is you're going to see strategy videos. There's already strategy videos going out about this boss fight. You're going to see articles written. You're going to see all this kind of stuff. And it's, it's important to kind of look at those things and say, yes, all right, I understand what we need to do for the fight. But really, the fun of it is saying, all right, we have these 10 people tonight in our raid. And they have varying degrees of skills, uh, you know, from a player point of view and from, like, the profession and talents point of view. What do we need to tweak to actually make this work? Because it's not going to be a cookie-cutter thing. It's not going to be, like, uh, you know, every group is going to have this composition. Well, we, you know, we might have to do it tonight with, uh, you know, three thieves, you know, and how are we going to make that work? And, you know, how do we how do we switch things up? So it's it's a puzzle that each raid group is going to have to figure out. Each guild is going to have to figure out. And I think it's going to go really well. I was happy that our pug group that was not on voice chat was not able to just walk through this. We struggled. The best we were able to do is 66%. And I believe that attempt, we only had like a minute and a half left on the enrage timer. Now let's talk about arrange timers for a minute. In this first fight, you have eight minutes to take out this boss. If you fail in eight minutes, it just wipes the raid. And uh, I'm not a big fan of enrage timers like this. They are uh, artificial, right? It's just a, it's like a hard enrage. 
if you don't have enough damage output or you can't get this done, uh, we're going to kill you in eight minutes no matter what you do. And the reason why they put stuff in, in like this is so you don't go in with a ridiculous build, right? And you just don't say, all right, we're going to have all like super tanky guardians or all healers or something. And you just eventually can win over the course of like 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, just because the boss can't kill you. So this is what it's trying to avoid. And it's also making it so that you need to be able to output a certain amount of damage um, while avoiding all of the mechanics and stuff like that. So you can't just sit there and focus on survival at 100%. There's some urgency to it. What I don't like about it is, you know, it's a little bit of a uh, forced way to make the encounter more difficult. And uh, I prefer when there's more of a soft and rage type mechanic. Um, and, it, and it sounds like it's very similar, but you know, there's some subtle differences to it. Like a very simple soft and rage would be like one of the mechanics would be the boss gets, uh, you know, maybe there's an orb or something that he can run over and collect uh, periodically. And every time they collect that orb, they get 10% stronger or something. So eventually, if your group takes too long, the boss will be, you know, too hard to manage. But it's not a, up. Oh, you hit the 8-minute mark, and now you're instantly wiped. Um, so, th you know, I've said stuff about Enraged Timers before. I hope they become more organic or more, like, uh, you know, tied into the mechanics of the fight. I understand why they're important in a lot of fights to put in, but I just don't like the whole time limit thing. Now, what I will say is people have been saying, you know, what about the Berserker meta, right? They, what, what, ArenaNet wants to get rid of the Berserker meta and, uh, you know, will, will this raid do that? Um, from my experience, I think what you're going to be doing with this, this raid is you're definitely going to have some characters in uh, Berserker gear and you want to maximize their DPS. But you're also going to want to have, uh, a couple, you're going to need to have a few people that are condition spec right? For when they split and there's that one, uh, I believe it's the red boss, uh, the red guardian requires you to have uh, condition damage. You're also going to uh, probably want a couple of people focused on support and healing. Uh, we saw that druids were, you know, the new druid using like cleric's gear was was very uh, powerful in keeping people alive. And it's, you know, and it's probably not required, but you could have somebody that's super tanky too to hold that aggro. We had a ranger who was constantly the highest on the toughness meter, and it seemed the boss was mostly trying to run after the person with the highest toughness. So you could, uh, you know, could spec somebody to be, uh, you know, basically a tank for this fight. So while I don't think uh, the, the Berserker meta is dead, I, I, I think at least if the other bo bosses follow suit like this, you're going to see uh, raid groups have a few members in Berserkers and then they'll kind of mix it up. Now, it's interesting I point that out. I think that's a good thing overall. You want to be able, you want to actually require people to have different specs and different roles in this. Um, but I do think that, you know, having a fight like this where you have to have, you definitely have to have probably three people or so doing conditions. You're going to need a couple people that can strip boons. And like I said, you probably want some, some supporty type guys as well. Um, it does make it so that, you know, you, you have to have a certain kind of uh, setup in order to be successful. And I could see in the beginning when people are still learning the fight that if you're going in there and you're just struggling for hours upon hours, uh, you know, and you realize that you don't have a, uh, an optimal group, you may kind of start to have thoughts of, all right, well, we really need to have two druids to do this. Or, you know, this, uh, this thief over here is really not contributing much. Or, you know, maybe we need... Uh, you know, oh, and this this person is using the Dragon Hunter uh, lead specialization, but it'd be really better if he switched back to Guardian. There's going to be a lot. I think there's going to be a lot of uh, of that where you're going to blame your failures necessarily on your composition, and instead of being able to adapt it. I think overall Guild Wars 2 system is great in that out of combat people could just switch their specs on the try. I'm going to try this utility skill. I'm going to try this talent build. I'm going to switch to my elite specialization. I'm going to switch back to my non, you know, my, my original profession. So you can make a lot of tweaks like that. I just hope it doesn't come to come, come to a, a point where it's where you get to it's like, oh, okay, well, we really need a, 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 an extra druid in here. So, you know, Bogot or your, your warrior uh, you know, isn't cutting it for this, so we're going to swap you out kind of thing. 
Uh, it's, it's definitely what they wanted to avoid. They didn't want you to have to, you know, it's the whole point of not having a Holy Trinity or one of the, the reasons why they didn't want a Holy Trinity. Like, they don't want you waiting outside the instance saying, oh, we can't play because we don't have enough healers. Well, you know, with that kind of situation might happen. We, we might not have enough boon strippers or we might not have enough people who are comfortable playing condition damage. We'll have to wait and see. But I, I just want to kind of address that because the whole talk of the communities about the, the, the you know, what, what specs are out there and... Is this going to, you know, mitigate everyone wanting to be Berserkers? And I think it will. I don't think you can survive uh, with just everybody running all Berserkers doing max damage. I think you're going to have to, you know, based on the, you know, the uh, mechanics of the fight, you're going to have to switch it up from time to time. Overall, I was extremely pleased by my test here. I love the fact that it was challenging. I love the mechanics that we saw so far. It was fun. It was in a cool environment. I like that it required different specs. I like the mechanics that we saw so far. I, I am very pleased by this because, you know, you get a little bit nervous when you're, you want a feature like this so bad in the game. You want something else to do with your guild every week besides guild missions. You know, you just really wanted them to knock it out of the park. And I, I loved my experience with it. But more importantly, I'm just looking around Reddit and the forums. Like, it seems like a lot of people really enjoyed uh, what they saw from this uh, raid boss. Not too many people beat it. It was beaten. I don't know exactly how many groups. Uh, were able to beat it, but it's not the type of thing where you can say, oh, people beat it like within the first day of the raid test, it's too easy. Uh, that's not the case. You can't look at the outliers. Those people were probably extremely skilled or threw a lot of time at it. And I think overall for most guild groups, you know, this is going to be something that they're going to have to work on. I do expect a lot of people to be able to beat the Veil Guardian, you know, in the first couple days when the raid is released. Uh, but, you know, that's because we've seen it before and it's meant to be one of the easier bosses. But I, I expect things going to ramp up in difficulty after that. I'm looking forward to this. Um, I, I, I'm excited that the, the fans have responded and they, they seem to really enjoy it. Now, the big finger-crossing moment is, please, when they come out with this, I really hope there's not just a plethora of bugs and different issues like that that kind of tarnishes everybody's first impression of it. I really want this to come out and just wow everybody and get people super, super excited about the expansion. So, in case you don't realize, the uh, first wing of this raid of Spirit Veil is going to be released sometime between the launch of Heart of Thorns, which is on October 23rd, and the holidays. It's not going to come out right away. They said that we're not going to have to wait too long but they want people to experience the the new zones and and level up their masteries and stuff before this this raid instance comes out it, it'll likely come out either several weeks or maybe a month after the launch of the game that's the first wing the first wing is going to have four bosses in it and there's going to be two more wings to this uh raid the first one's going to come early in 2016 and the the third one a little bit later in 2016 so it's going to be super fun to uh kind of watch this unfold and i'm super excited for a, a whole new game mode and a whole new thing to do with my guild in Guild Wars 2. Great job to ArenaNet, great job to the raid designers, and uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, I'd appreciate you hitting that thumbs up before you go, and subscribing to the channel so you can be notified when future videos are released. Hope everybody has a fantastic day, and I'll see you next time. Take care.